Hi friends, this is Mark Fox of Forever Free Ministries bringing you another short video of Amazing Prophecies. Today I'm going to share with you seven fast facts for why the long delay of the second coming of Jesus Christ. You are about to be surprised by some of these eye-opening Bible facts. You know, as a son of a pastor, I grew up hearing about the imminent return of Jesus Christ. I also remember distinctly my mom and dad sitting down watching televised evangelistic crusades with world evangelist Billy Graham as he preached about the second coming of Jesus Christ to massive crowds. Listen for a moment to what he preached. And all the way through the scriptures, the whole book of Revelation, one book after another, is almost given entirely to the discussion of the events surrounding the coming again of Jesus Christ. After all these years, Jesus has not yet come again. I have in my hand here what I just received from a cousin last year, my grandfather's Bible. My grandfather not only believed in the second coming of Jesus, but he preached it from the pulpit for years. He died in 1959, and just the other day, I discovered a church bulletin uh, tucked away in its pages, and to my surprise, it was the bulletin that announced the passing of my grandfather in 1959. Now, my grandfather believed and preached that Jesus would come very soon, and I'm sure he preached from this very Bible. And here we are, 55 plus years later, and Jesus had not yet come again. From my grandfather's Bible, I read John 14 and verse three, where Jesus promises faithful followers, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, you may be also. This precious prophecy of Jesus comes ringing down the quarters of time with meaning for today. But why hasn't Jesus come again yet? This nagging, persistent question has troubled many sincere believers for centuries. It is an unavoidable, sensitive topic. It is a thoroughly confusing issue that needs to be clearly, concisely explained. So with God's help, I want to share with you seven fast facts that will clear up the confusion. Fact number one, gospel preached around the world. Jesus said that his gospel must be preached around the world before he comes again. According to Matthew 24 and verse 14, we read, and this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. Now, there are still parts of the world that need to be reached. There are still many people who have not yet had the opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. But with the aid of technology, the gospel is spreading more rapidly. Fact number two, time for repentance. Jesus delays his second coming in order for more people to be saved just as he did in the days of Noah. Peter predicted that there would be, quote, scoffers of the second coming because of its delay. And Peter says that it was that way during the days of Noah, just before the flood. And that the reason for the delay of the flood and the reason for the delay of the second coming is because, quote, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Second Peter three, verse nine. All right, fact number three, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God will first pour out the latter rain, the early and latter rain measure of the Holy Spirit before he comes again. Quote, he will come to us like the rain, like the latter and former rain to the earth according to Hosea 6, verse 3, and Joel 2, verse 23. Now, this will bring a wonderful revival of godliness among God's people like never before. Fact number four, shaking in the church. First, there will be a mighty shaking among God's people. Jesus is going to vomit out of his mouth all those who profess to know him, but remain lukewarm, according to Revelation 3, 16 and 17. Jesus will find a people eagerly 
anxiously waiting for him, and they're no longer lukewarm. After all, Jesus did say that his people need to be awakened from their spiritual slumber, their spiritual sleep, before he comes again, according to the powerful parable of the ten virgins that Jesus shared in Matthew 25. Fact number five, saints wearing the wedding garment. First, the bride must get ready by putting on Christ's robe of righteousness. In the book of Revelation, we read that, quote, his wife has made herself ready. And to her, it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. That's found in Revelation 19, verses 7 to 9. Now the saints are righteous and do righteousness through Christ's power alone. So the robe of Christ's righteousness is a gift of Jesus that we receive by faith in him. Fact number six, saints sealed. Jesus is going to seal his saints before he comes again. In the book of Revelation, we read, quote, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. Revelation 7, verse 3. So what happens once his faithful are finally sealed? That leads us to fact number seven. The bride will be purified by test. Jesus will lovingly and thoroughly purify his people by the fires of tribulation and test before he comes again. According to Revelation 3 verse 10, Daniel 12 verse 10, and Ephesians 5 verse 27. Yes, friends, the bride, the church, the faithful will be purified just as the three Hebrews were tested in the fiery furnace in ancient Babylon. Jesus said that some would become so impatient and discouraged by the delay of his return that they would literally say in their heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with the drunkards, according to Matthew 24 and verse 48. I hope you and I do not make that fatal mistake of giving up our faith in the imminent return and begin to compromise with the world and live in sin. The many centuries, the prophets declared that Jesus would come as the Messiah, and he finally did. Then when he did come, he promised he would come again, and he will. It is not a matter of if. It is not a matter of if, but a matter of when. Always remember this crucial point, that the waiting is for preparing. It's not an idle waiting. We are preparing. How? By putting on that robe of Christ's righteousness. So yes, Jesus is going to come soon. But first, he must, according to the Bible, he must have a people that have been revived. They have fallen in love with the Lamb. They are no longer lukewarm. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. They're on fire for Jesus Christ. And when this is our experience, Jesus will come and claim us as his own. Do you want this kind of experience? I do. If you like this video, I have a number of other videos that deal with end time prophecies and current events on my YouTube channel. So check out my channel page and subscribe if you want to get notified of my future uploads. You won't want to miss them. If you would like a comprehensive Bible study outline of this topic, be sure to download it from our website, BibleProphecy.info. That's BibleProphecy.info. God bless you in your quest to know prophetic truth that sets us forever free.